Another interesting piece of infrastructure where you could run your cloud-based services is AWS Outpost. Let's talk about this. Now, we are always trying to host our application in a way that my users can access it as efficiently as possible. So we host our application somewhere and my users would go to it and access it. Means they are going to cloud. What if we could bring the cloud to them? Right? Confused? That's where Outpost as a service comes in. Let me expand on this particular topic. So. Outpost is basically physical set of server hosted on your premises given to you by AWS. So Outpost solution allows you to extend and run native services on premises. Why I may do that? Maybe there is some requirement to have local connectivity. Maybe I can't rely on that uh, remote data storage. Maybe I have a legal requirement to keep all my data local within that premises or I need a latency which is much, much lower than accessing a service over internet. That time I could order a outpost server from AWS. So AWS would get these servers commissioned and connected in my network and they would be visible in my AWS management console and in API request and now I should start hosting resources on that like I go ahead and say deploy a EC2 instance on that. So it's a physical component provided by AWS on which cloud-based services would be running that is called outpost this is not a isolated cloud i have to be very clear here you can't say that i would just have a outpost service on my premises and i would never be connecting it to a region and it would still work answer for that it is not a isolated service you can run some services locally and connect to the broader range of services in the local aws region so once you configure your outpost services they would be connecting to a region and would be then operating right i'll explain more on that so this hardware is available into variety of form factor from 1u to 2u outpost server to 42u outpost rack and with multiple rack deployment i have a very graphical way of seeing this information that is called this website really really nice way of representing so outpost is a rack like this what you are seeing here is your 42u rack this u is a way of measuring the length or the size of the server rack so this is 42u rack like 42 type of servers can come in that this is a 1u server and this is a 2u server obviously this physical dimension would also dictate that how much capacity a server can have so if you are looking for i want to have let's say a, a remote uh, location where i have to run a ec2 machine though it has connectivity to on to internet and to a region but i want all processing to happen locally on that server itself maybe a, a remote office or maybe a remote warehouse or somewhere so you could use these outposts as a service Initially, it was only a full rack available, but now even a smaller footprint of rack is available or smaller server 1U or 2U server, which you could take into consideration. I would include this link into the resources and you could go into more detail of it. Let's say I expand on, on this Outpost 42U rack server. It would be giving you a interactive diagram to play around with that. So this is my servers here in that there are multiple component available we could see host network switches patch panel there is power switch all of these are displayed to you here so let's say i go and see patch panel it would tell me that okay this is my connectivity behind for my application and this is where i would be connecting my fiber optics or other type of network connection to get started so you would still need network connectivity it is not something which is running in isolation but it is allowing you to expand your vpc and host a rack within your own environment either a full rack or a partial rack or just one single server if you need so this is one of the 41u server which is 
capable of running M5 instances, graphic optimized instances, IO intensive, I3 EN instances. So one you full depth of 20 inches wide. This is one of the server which is visible to you. And obviously you could have multiple of these servers working together in the whole rack. It comes with its redundant power connector and power shelf. So that should still be able to connect to your local environment. Once you order these racks, that will be shipped to you. AWS will directly maybe manage it on your, sorry, directly configure and deploy it on your environment or maybe work with some local partner and they would come to your place and then display, uh, then deploy the service connected to AWS network, configure it, and then you should be able to leverage this particular service to deploy your workload. So this is redundancy is built in into these services. All right, so that is Outpost. You can get Outpost Rack or you could get Outpost Server. As I said, both options are available for you to get started on, right? So what is happening here? Use case that if I have a low latency compute requirement, I cannot move my data outside. There is a data residency regulation I have to follow or for some reason I have to do local data processing first, then only I can move it forward. Then that time the Outpost is a good option. One thing to be clear, output is not a private cloud. Think of it as an extension of region into your facility. So you can't say I would have 10 outposts and I would set up everything on my own and I would run them in isolation. That is not the way it works. It is still considered as an extension of region and it is still the same infrastructure of AWS running in your premises. Same API, same tool, same management control operation, which is making you a truly consistent, giving you a truly consistent experience of a hybrid compute policy. So how you get started? First, you have to order this. So you go to management console and select what configuration you need. Do you need to run more uh, M5 type of instances or C5 type of instances? Do you need more local storage? So you get that configuration or you place the order. After order is placed, AWS would get this installed with on-site personal or a third party contractor. And once it is connected to your network, AWS will remotely provision your resources on it. So you will still go to management console. It would start showing as a resource, as an extension of a VPC, which you will create subnet and other resources on. And then you would deploy these resources. I, I explained this through this manner that consider that when you deploy your outpost, it would have its data plane here. Means all data level operation would be carried by this particular outpost rack, which is, which is running your uh, services and EC2 machine and RDS databases. So data plane is there, but it's a control plane is still residing on AWS means if you are trying to send a command to it or you want to perform some operations on it, then you would be still needing connectivity. So you would have your AWS control plane managing this particular service and it would be shown as an extension of your VPC. Okay, so coming back to discussion, uh, you can launch AWS services including EC2 for compute, VPC for networking, and ECS for container. Most compute related workload you could launch on that. When output is installed and is visible in management console, AWS will monitor as a part of the public region and will automatically execute software upgrade and patches. So if there is something needs to be updated, that is the responsibility of AWS. Maybe there's an issue with the power supply. They are monitoring it and they would be notifying you that there would be a replacement sent or maybe some other maintenance required on it. So they would be keeping you posted about any of the issues. It will be managed by AWS and monitored also by AWS. Obviously, when you launch your EC2 machines on it, that would become your responsibility, but the bulk hardware maintenance type of thing would be taken care by AWS for you. So here I am on AWS management console and I would be going into the outpost section here in that I could go ahead and say place order. We could browse the catalog. First, we would need a site where it would be hosted and then outpost would be sent and then configuration from our catalog. How to place an order, what are some benefit, this all details are there. Let's browse the catalog and see what is available. You may order single servers. 
you may order the whole rack and if you say okay i'm looking for a single server you would be needing a, a detail of configuration so you can download outpost server activator app and then you can activate it later you would be needing rack and that time you would select configuration associated with it and you would be then requesting your outpost obviously there is no re access to this resource here on this but obviously you could create outpost select a server select a rack specify which availability zone it would be connected to specify the site id which is basically a representation of your own location and you could say whether you are looking for a server or you are looking for a rack and that's based on next step you would be able to select your catalog for configuration associated with it so i hope this thing is clear and you have a better idea on how you could leverage additional piece of infrastructure to get your application running on premises or near to your users i'll talk about vmware cloud on aws into the next section so please join me into next section thank you